Welcome back to Let's Go Design. It's episode number two of the Multisport Practice Cage. After our field trip last time, we're ready to dive into CAD. This episode, we'll create the entire framework of the cage and add in our goals. One of the students we met is also coming into the studio to help us out. And I've got one more surprise for you. It was a close vote online on which sports to design into the cage, so I decided to do all three, football, soccer, and street hockey. Time to go to work. All right, we're going to model our cage footprint off actual fields of play. A buddy of mine emailed me these 2D drawings, really cool. They're perfect for what I need, but to save time, I do not want to recreate them in 3D. There's a trick I have for reusing legacy data like this. All right, I've got the DWG files open in a cool new program called DraftSite. It's easy to use, it's free, you gotta love that. First, I'm gonna edit these drawings a bit. I only need certain pieces of data. Then I'm gonna copy that and paste it into SolidWorks. Now that I have all these fields in 3D, I'm gonna start to work out the footprint of the design. I need to find a size of this cage that's gonna work for all three sports. For soccer, I like the penalty box area. That works perfect. For hockey, I like between the crease and the blue line. That's enough space to deal with. And for football, obviously, one of the end zones is enough. We can combine those areas of the field and we should be good to go. Next, we'll create posts for the cage. We're gonna make them telescoping so we can adjust the size. Next thing I wanna do is drop in our nets and our goals. I'm gonna use a texture to create the basic look of the netting. I don't need to actually create the netting, just the, the appearance of it, so that looks cool. The relationship between the different goals is key. Since I want an all-in-one goal, for the time being, we'll have the street hockey goal in the middle with the soccer goal surrounding it, and then the football net will go up on top. I tell you what, guys, I think we're onto something pretty cool here. Now that we have our pieces in place, we're going to look at configurations. Since our buddy Robinson from episode one was looking for an excuse to get out of class today, I invited him here to help. What's up, Jeremy? Ooh, hey, Robinson, how you doing? Good, okay, still a little sore? Yeah, still sore. You ready to do some real CAD work? Absolutely. All right, let me show you where we're at. All right, Robinson, this is the basic design so far. I've got some cage walls here. I've got the lines for each sport on the floor, the nets housed together on each end. What do you think? It looks pretty cool. I like that it has two sides. I like the size of it. Can you zoom in on the goals, please? Sure. So the idea of the configurations is to look at different sizes of the cage, make sure the components fit the way we want. Yeah, remember at the field we talked about the soccer goals, how they were too wide. Can we maybe make them smaller? Sure. And the depth of the goal it seems a little shallow. Um, the balls might bounce right out of it. Well, we can fix that, too. Let me make the goal a little bit deeper. I like that. And you and I also talked about a targeting system before. I think we could put little targets right here in these corners. Cool. Um, you should get different points for hitting different targets, right? Well, I, actually, I was thinking that the player gets a single point for every goal, just like in a real game situation. Yeah, but what about the degree of difficulty? Well, we'll pick up on that later. Are you happy with this thing so far? Now that I've weighed in, I feel pretty good about it. All right, Robinson, let's talk game experience. I think the cage should have some virtual players inside of it. How are your tracing skills? We're doing this in 2D? Not exactly. I need a vector image first. We're going to do that on the Wacom tablet. Vector images? That's nice. Right? All right, using the Wacom tablet and Adobe Illustrator, we can quickly create images of the players and then open that file up natively into SolidWorks. This is pretty sweet. I've never used one before. You know, when I was your age, I, I had know, to use... I know, I know. Pencils and rulers. That's right. All right. So we have our sketch. Now, can I put him into our assembly? Sure. Let's jump back over to SolidWorks. Definitely. All right, if I open this file up, all I got to do is make a few clean changes with the trim command and then some sheet metal tools to bring this guy alive into 3D. Okay, that's cool. Hey, Robinson, I read somewhere they estimate it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become a world-class athlete. Well, my plan is to become a world-class engineer. That's much cooler. I got to agree. You remind me a lot of me. We've got these players. Where can we add them? Let's put one of these guys on this post. Let's put another one on this post. Now that way I can fold them back and forth. This is getting pretty awesome. It's like life-size foosball. You want to see a fly-through? Oh yeah. Yeah, check this function now. All right, time to vote. I want you to settle a little argument between Robinson and myself. Do you think the player should get one point for every goal, like in a real game? Or do you think players should get multiple points based on level of difficulty? 
and next episode, we'll design elements within the cage, the ball sorter and the launching mechanisms. Make sure you vote my way and see you next time on Let's Go Design. 